Okay, sound speeding. Good afternoon or good morning. It's 11 a.m. about to be lunch. I haven't eaten yet, so I thought why not just shoot out a quick video in an hour before I have my lunch. Let's do this. Recently, my past two videos, my I think it is, yeah, my last two uploads have been me walking around and taking photos for you guys, and those videos have been doing very well. But I thought why not just take a break today, have another sit down video because not gonna lie, those videos are expensive. I have to buy film, ship it, then pay for it to get processed and scanned. We all know that film photography is a very expensive hobby so yeah we're gonna give my bank account a rest today and also i've noticed that when you do those videos when i walk around and shoot for you guys you don't really enjoy the process as much because i'm more focused on the video rather than my photos so i saw willem and Velandis talk about this in a podcast but it is really difficult sometimes i specifically go out and say i'm not gonna film this because i want to try to make some actual photos but right. one thing that people definitely don't realize is that like if you post a video and not all the photos are bangers, it's probably because you were also focused on this whole second aspect of trying to yeah. tell the story and make the video of 100%. making the photos. And it's very, very true. So yeah, that's why I'm taking a step back and taking my time before I shoot another role because not only is it expensive, but also I want it to feel special again. I really want to compose my shots and think about what I'm shooting and tell a story out of it. I think my next role is going to be some HB5. So yeah, look out for that. But anyway, yeah, we're doing a sit down video today, just like the old days on this channel, which was like two, three months ago. <laughs> I've noticed that the majority of you lot that watch my videos are beginner film photographers. So I thought, why not make a video dedicated to you guys all about film photography tips for beginners right so i have five tips for you guys that have helped me personally and hopefully they'll help you so i'll try and keep this concise but also far at the same time okay so my first two tips are all about exposure and tip number one is all about the sunny 16 rule if you guys aren't aware of what the sunny 16 rule is it's essentially a way for you to determine your exposure without a light meter whether it's like a manual light meter or a light meter built into your camera so the sunny 16 rule basically says that if you are shooting outside under direct sunlight much like right now at 11 a.m the best way to properly expose your shot is to set your aperture to f16 and your shutter speed to the reciprocal of your film's iso by the way the sun's going to be popping up and down for this video the weather's very bipolar today it's like overcast then sunny out of nowhere but yes if you ever get confused with the rule just remember the name sunny 16 if it's sunny put your aperture to f16 and your shutter speed to the same number as the iso of your film or the speed of your film and if you're like me where when i first heard this I was like, well, what if it's not sunny? How will I expose my photo then? Or well, don't worry, there's an entire chart here. I'll pop it up on screen. So for example, if it's like lightly cloudy, F11, cloudy, F8, overcast, F5.6, and sunset, F4. And just keep your shutter speed the same number as your ISO. So yeah, that's a very handy rule for beginner film photographers, especially for those who don't have a built-in light meter. If you're not doing a proper shoot and you're just taking photos for fun, use that rule to properly expose your photos. Okay, so let's say that you do have a light meter over light meter in your camera is working that's where tip number two comes in now for those of you that have dabbled in digital photography then you would know that you expose for the highlights in your frame where in film photography it's quite the opposite because you have to expose for the shadows in your frame and that's mainly because you want to preserve the details in the shadows and the darker areas so yeah to get the most of your shot make sure you guys expose for the shadows to get every single detail in there unless you're going for like the intentional underexposed look which you can go for but just be warned that it can turn out to be very very grainy and very flat and faded where it's quite hard to make out the image especially do this during night photography if you're going out and shooting behind a lamppost for example make sure you meter your photo away from the lamppost in the darker areas okay so i hope you guys got those first two tips based on exposure and understand them well but the third tip has to do with preserving your film and that's to keep your film in the fridge and the main reason we do this is because film the actual film strip itself is made out of chemicals and by keeping the chemicals in the fridge it will preserve them for much longer compared to if it was just left at room temperature. Not only does it preserve the chemicals in your film but it can also extend the expiration date if it's stored properly. For short term use like if I were to use this film in a few weeks to a month I would keep this in the fridge but if I were to use it like months down the line or maybe a year or so later I would keep it in the freezer. That's what I heard anyway. I posted this fact on TikTok by the way follow me on TikTok at Cameron Caffrey. Anyway I posted it on TikTok and somebody commented asking will it not affect or contaminate the food in the fridge considering the fact that these are chemicals and no it won't because it's basically stored safely like it's in a box 
it's also in a plastic container and for me personally i store all of my film in a tupperware container so yeah it's all separated and it's all safe store your film in the fridge so let's say that you've stored all of your film properly in the fridge and you're ready to shoot now well that leads us to a next step and tip which is all about loading your film tip number four don't pull the film strip too far when loading in order to get an extra shot or two i myself am guilty for not following this rule because i know how daunting it is to load film into a film camera you want to make sure that it's connected properly to the sprockets and everything's winding like in order so you you fire like a test shot or two but once you've done that a few times and you understand how your camera and the film works you can just pull out a few inches from your film canister and just don't overextend your film when loading because by doing that as i said you can have an extra shot or two so for example if you're shooting on kent mirpan 400 which has 24 exposures you can get 26 and maybe even 27 if you're matty pid with your film i am not going to lie to you guys i haven't done that yet because i'm still quite a newbie to this entire film photography thing which is why i'm sharing my journey with you lot and we can learn together i've noticed that i always overextend when loading film especially my last two film which was ilford and kentmere if you guys watch carefully i always pulled out like just way too much and it was loose and it was harder to load if anything so i was wasting money i was wasting shots so yeah that's a good tip to follow just pull out or extend as little as you can from the canister when loading in order to have an extra shot or two cool we're learning together don't pull the film strip too far okay sweet last and final tip of this video tip number five which is a very straightforward tip and that's all about the camera strap on your film camera so if you guys are fortunate enough to have the original camera strap for your film camera then you would always know your focal length and that's because the length of your camera strap from your film camera is the focal length of your camera does that make sense? So for example, if I were to hold out my film strap like this, my focal range will be where the strap ends right over here. And this tip and fact definitely comes in handy for people who own rangefinder cameras such as myself, where the focus patch may be dissolved after a while or the focus patch is no longer there. Okay, quick correction here. After doing some more research, I've come to find out that this rule only applies to point and shoot cameras that have a long wrist strap. So yes, apologies for that. This does not apply to every single camera that has the original strap on it but it does apply for those point and shoot cameras that have a long wrist strap that long wrist strap on the point and shoot represents the minimal focal length of the camera so yeah that's my five tips for the beginner film photographers out there including myself um, that have helped me or are going to help me and i hope they do the same for you as well please please feel free to comment down below if you guys have any questions whatsoever i promise to reply i know a lot of you guys comment down below or even message me on instagram asking questions which is very nice because i like that we are creating like this small community here so yeah i i promise i will reply when i can and a lot of the times i do like 90 percent of the time i do more than 90 percent. what am i talking about i always reply so follow me on instagram as well if you have any questions or to check out my photography or to know when i'm going to post a future video my instagram is at kathry cameron it's popped up on the screen yeah sweet and of course please subscribe to my youtube channel it would really help me a lot and please like this video to help me out with the algorithm turn on my post notifications i post every one to two weeks like a week and a half to be to be to be safe i really do hope this video helped you guys a lot let me know what other videos you guys want to see what kind of videos of mine you enjoy watching so i know what to do so i wouldn't have any trouble like thinking about what to upload or post is there only film photography you guys want to learn about or do you also want to learn about filmmaking or digital photography whatever i'm open to suggestions please comment it down below and as always thank you guys so so much for watching it really does mean a lot whenever you guys show your love and support i'll see you in a few days from now or in a week or two for my next video until then take care stay safe much love bye bye